Hello, and welcome to my series where I analyze startups from a product perspective. Today, we're going to talk about Toucan. Toucan helps you learn a new language while you browse the web. You see, Toucan is a Chrome extension that works in your browser. As you go about your day on the internet, Toucan will change some of the words from the original language to the one you're trying to learn. The user can hover on these words to see them in their original language, so you'll be practicing Portuguese while going over your Twitter feed. Let's think about the problem Tukan is solving. Many people would love to speak another language, but only a small portion of them are willing to work hard to do so, and even fewer people will keep exercising consistently over time. Historically, the language learning market focused on highly committed people and offered them expensive and time-consuming courses. Then, about 10 years ago, Duolingo came along. Duolingo was able to expand the market by providing a solution to people with lower commitment. With Duolingo, this group of people can now casually learn a new language for free free on their phone whenever they have a free few minutes to spare. Duolingo's product offers a much easier learning experience than full-blown courses, but people find it hard to commit even to bite-sized learning. That's why Duolingo's number one goal is to help you form a habit of learning. Once you get used to learning a little bit every day, it's much easier to stick with it. To understand how Duolingo nudges users to form a habit of learning, we can use Nireyal's model the hook. The first step in the model is the external trigger. Duolingo will send you a push notification on a daily basis to remind you to go to the app and practice. The second step in the model is an action taken by the user. In Duolingo's case, that's the actual learning and practicing. The third step in the model is the reward. Duolingo is famous for its utilization of gamification techniques that reward users with things you might have seen in video games, such as a level system, scoreboard, hot streaks, skins, points, and many more. The fourth step in the model is the investment. That's where the user actions are the basis for future triggers. In Duolingo's example, think of a user that completed a lesson and gained enough experience points to be the number one in his league. Duolingo will now send that user a notification the moment he'll lose that number one spot. The main idea behind Nireyal's model is that reliance on external trigger like push notification is temporary, since once you've gone through the loop enough times, you'll develop internal triggers. In other words, you'll be hooked to go into the app. Now, Duolingo is the poster child of this model, and they're doing a phenomenal job at utilizing notifications and gamification technique. They really are. And yet, most of Duolingo's users aren't hooked. Out of 42 million monthly active users, only about 10 million are daily active users, giving Duolingo's a dao mao ratio of about 24%. Don't get me wrong, building a consumer app with 24% Dao Mao is pretty damn good, but it does show the limitation of the hook model. Making users go to your app on a daily basis is incredibly hard, even when you're doing all the right things. That's where Toucan comes in. The brilliant part about Toucan is that it asks almost nothing from its users. After you've installed Toucan's Chrome extension, you're a daily active user almost by default. Lowering the level of difficulty for users allows Toucan to target an even larger share of potential language learners. That's a pretty cool move, but I do think it will present some challenges around monetization the road. Tukan is a very early stage B2C startup, pre-round A, so I wasn't expecting it to focus much on monetization. Duolingo, for example, rolled out its subscription service sometime around the Series E funding, almost six years after their launch. But to my surprise, Tukan actually started working on monetizing its user base. Tukan, like Duolingo, operates a freemium business model. In this model, users get to use the product for free, but are offered a premium experience for a cost. Generally speaking, users convert to premium experiences either because it promises to take away something that annoys them, like ads, or to give them something that they want, like certain product features. Looking at Tukan's product, we can see that their version of ads are very unobtrusive compared with ads on Duolingo. They don't really harm the user's experience in any way. That's great for users, but naturally, less intrusive ads lead to fewer premium users. Technically speaking, Tukan can just make the ads more and more annoying until they hit the desired conversion rate to premium but I suspect they won't be able to do that. You see, with great power comes great responsibility. By living on our browsers, Toucan benefits from a very small share of our attention. That's what makes it so powerful. But since it's an always-on product, users are much less tolerant to any friction in the experience. If Toucan will experiment with more annoying ads, 
I suspect it will lose a massive share of its users that will just remove the Chrome extension altogether. You can see that the Toucan team is worried about people removing their extension by the amount of attention they give to the pause capability. Clicking on the Chrome extension, right at the top, I can see a toggle to pause Toucan's activity completely. And then there's another toggle to pause Toucan only on the specific site I'm currently using. There's even a preset keyboard shortcut to pause Toucan. Product teams don't normally spend so much time and effort on features that are meant to stop users from using their product. But the Toucan team wisely understands that it's better to let users pause the product than lose them forever. Now, having said all that, I wouldn't be too worried about monetization at the moment. At this stage, Toucan should focus on optimizing its user experience and growing the number of active users. There are many different ways to do monetization and if you have, say, a million language learners that are using your product on a daily basis, the money will soon follow, one way or another. That's it for this time. If you like the video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button to help this humble channel grow.